Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 64. Unfortunately, we had some uh, logistic issues today, so we didn't do a live show, but we're trying to do an attempt over Skype tonight, um, hence all the headphones and everything else. Uh, with us tonight, we have uh, Johan Els, as usual, and Jan van Mielen, who's just flown in from I'm not sure where. East London, the bustling metropolis. Oh, yeah, it was it for the um, telecom stuff that was yes, going on yeah. this week? Yeah. Cool. How was it? Um, it's actually, I've been to two Satnacks now, and both have actually been thoroughly enjoyable. It's very technical stuff, um, with a, a smattering of, of more high-level sort of regulatory and policy stuff. Um, but it's, it's uh, food for my broadband types. Uh, cool. yeah, really no. down and dirty telecom stuff. I love it. Cool. Anything interesting come out? I know that's one of the main things we actually want to cover tonight. Yeah, sure. Um, I can I can rattle through the um, the basic list of stuff um, that we covered there. Um, so I think first and foremost, uh, the first and foremost thing that came out of that was the minister, the deputy minister of communications, dropping a bit of a what people are calling a bombshell. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure I would call it a bombshell. In that they are they want to chat to Research in Motion South Africa about decrypting BlackBerry Messenger messages. So they want to be able to decrypt BlackBerry Messenger messages with a court order. So if there's a crime being committed or they have reasonable suspicion of a crime being committed and they can prove it to a judge, the judge gives them a court order and they can then tell RIM to decrypt the messages. Um, The minister also said that they are looking at increasing the broadband speed definition. Cool. Currently, the definition for broadband in South Africa is 256 kbps, um, which, well, by any stretch, is ridiculously low. It's it's mm-hmm. that's that's narrow band. Um, but um, they are looking at increasing that to five megabits per second. They said the last we heard was two megabits per second. That's relevant because the government has promised broadband for all by 2020, and um, a broadband for all at 256 kbps is not particularly, uh, you know, earth shattering. Right, True. So, I just want to um, ask something then, there quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, now, the thing is, they promised broadband for all by 2020, but is that uh, in 2020 what they define as broadband or whatever they define broadband as when they started the initiative? No, no, it'll be 2020 by the definition of broadband as it is laid out in their policy. Um, yeah, and, and the, I think the reason for this is that they've attracted a lot of criticism. They've attracted criticism in the form of, you know, what is broadband exactly, mm-hmm. A, and B, what, is broad, what does for all even mean? Does that mean every person will have access to broadband in their house, on their phone? What does it mean? And uh, they clarified that as well, um, not at this conference, but a bit earlier, to say that it means coverage. Basically, you have the opportunity to access broadband, even if you choose not to. So that includes wireless and 3G and stuff. But following that argument, you could just, you know, put 3G towers everywhere. No one can afford it. No one has broadband. Yes. And that's uh, that was obviously another criticism. And so they've brought it up. Um, I mean, there's nothing they can do about that when it, when it comes to, to profit-driven True. broadband. The fact is is that it costs a certain amount of money to deliver that service. Uh, we're seeing mm-hmm. the cost dropping, but it's obviously not anywhere near levels of affordability for, for those below the breadline in South Africa. But um, by 2020, one can only hope that the prices have become so low that it will become affordable for the average South African. Mm-hmm. Um, the, then there were two other topics Sorry, that came uh, up. Just one last yeah. question there quickly. Sure. Uh, the other thing with that is uh, they, they specified broadband as 5 megabits per second, you said. But if you look at like the, the, most people, at, yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah. Uh, it's 4 megabits ADSL. Also, is that yeah. symmetric 5 megabits? No, uh, it's download speed only. So okay. it'll be Did 5 megabits. Um, anyway, yeah. specify what upload speed has to be. No, no. Nobody's talking about upload speed right now. Um, it is something I, I think that we'll we'll have to discuss at some stage. But right now, I think everybody's just focused on on getting people to be able to consume content um, and maybe yeah and, and participate in the web. 
Um, they're not too concerned about uh, at what rate you upload at this well, stage. The problem without decent upload, you can't really add your own content. Yes. So it's just be, being, you know, we do this quite often, so we're far more aware of that. But yeah, yeah. my main thing is I want the whole South Africa to start participating in a lot of these things. And um, yeah. if they've got very bad upload, it makes it so much harder to participate. Yeah, especially video. So uh, I think you've hit on a, on a very important thing here because um, video, uh, the, the, the whole role of the, or the whole theme of the conference was social networking and the role of social networking, you know, in South Africa and, and uh, in enterprises and stuff. And so the, the, the particular topics that, that were covered when it came to regulatory and policy stuff was social networking as a way for the marginalized and the vulnerable to participate in the web, to participate in the digital revolution. And one of the things that came up in the conference as well is that video is going to be a more powerful tool than, um, than text, especially in South Africa where there's a lot of illiteracy. Um, so it's going to be, you know, people will more, it'll be easier for people to understand video, it'll be easier for people to contribute video if those means were afforded to them because they just don't have the language skills to to put stuff in text. Um, and so the video will open up the domain to a lot more people, was the prediction made. I, I agree quite strongly with that. Jan, did you have anything to add in there? Because you might be a bit close to your no, heart at that point, guys, or can you? <laughs> no, we're just going to be careful for the cross-talking tonight. Eh? Yeah. Um, sure. Jan, I want to come back to the BBM uh, issue. I, I do not use BlackBerry and I don't foresee myself in the near future doing it. What is, Sorry, I mean, sorry. this is obviously after the whole UK uh, escapades with that uh, rights and stuff that they said no decrypting of the BBM. But I mean, what does it actually say? Uh, so the every BBM, BBM message is being kept on the BBM servers. Hmm. Yeah, and, and these are questions that, that came up. Um, so it seems that there will be that that a research in motion will will store a certain amount of messages, or if they don't, um, then at least the, uh, the, the it will be required. I think is is what it comes down to, and at the very what? least, it's going to be required of uh, research in motion to um, allow access to BBMs you know, at the point where they could serve the court order. So in other words, if you go, listen, we have reasonable suspicion to believe that these people are involved in criminal activity. We now need to be able to track their BBMs. So even if you don't have so the, the historical from archives... Point going forward. So, so it could be from a point okay. going forward. Not I'm saying it could be from a point going forward, not necessarily a log. Uh, yes. But I, I think a log is a reasonable thing um, uh, for, to expect these guys to keep. So um, I suspect that we'll see something in the cybercrime policy. That's what this all comes out of, by the way, is the Deputy Minister said they're mm. working on the cybercrime policy and they're going to table this uh, to the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee. They're going to publish it in the Gazette for public comment. So um, that's important for people to note. This is not cast in stone. Mm. These are going to be suggestions put forward by the DOC in a cybercrime policy, which people can then comment on. So if you feel particularly strongly about the issue, make sure to get your comments in when they publish this in the, in the Gazette. So I suspect that in this policy document, they're going to say something about data retention because there is stuff about data retention in our current laws. I'm not sure which ones. It might be RICA, um, that, that companies have to retain data for five years. And I think RIM South Africa will be no different. Now, my question with this is you just need one person to now write a messaging app that can install on Blackberries, that can do Blackberry to Blackberry messaging, and you bypass all of this. Yes. My next question was if somebody can now actually do an analysis of all these platforms and actually just confirm which are keeping logs and which aren't. So something like mm. Skype is actually client to client communication. So the records are kept on the clients, not on the servers. Mm. That's why yeah. Skype doesn't work offline. Yeah, and, and for instance, Google Talk is a wonderful example of something which can be said to record everything you do. So my Google Talk, for one, ar you know, archives everything. You know, Same. Google Talk has that off the record button, right? Uh, 
Um, so everything else is stored on Google servers. So, I mean, uh, and all that stuff is accessible through the Patriot Act in the United States. And um, I, I'm wondering if the SA government can't have some sort of agreement to get your Google Talk stuff. But right now, I mean, for example, um, if people say, oh, yeah, BBM is this encrypted platform that allows people to organize crime without, you know, without being able to, you know, without it being able to be tracked, Google Talk offers you SSL encryption of your, in, of your communications. But, I mean, I think in fairness, the, the minister was really just talking about BBM because it was top of mind. I think the cybercrime policy is going to handle instant messaging and social networking in general. Okay. I must say, with BBM, just from some of the stuff that came out of England, is they said they couldn't always retrieve all the messages. But what they could, there was a log of who sent a message to who. And from that, it, you could actually find the networks that they used. Or networks okay. of people. Yeah, yeah. One thing that Research in Motion has made abundantly clear every time this has come up, because this has come up in Saudi Arabia, um, in, you know, before, and it came up now in the UK as well, and it came up in another country before that. I think it might have been Syria. Um, and every single time, Research in Motion made it clear that they cannot do anything about BlackBerry Enterprise customers. Hmm. So, and that, that's sort of a no-brainer. If you want to get the records of people who use BES, you have to go to whoever handles the encryption um, handles that server yeah so it's it's the same as you know you hosting a sip server and somebody subpoenaing telcom for those records uh, i mean they, they they won't have your records yeah you mentioned there were another two things or points that came up that you want to speak about sure i'm quickly mentioning them the the one was um uh, there was a very very uh, lively discussion um, two very lively panels. Huh? The one was amongst Celsius and Telcom's regulatory guys, along with Angus Hay from Neotel. Um, those of you that follow the technology industry will be quite familiar with Angus. And that was about local loop unbundling, amongst yeah. other things. The debate ranged about, uh, about many things, but something that came out there was uh, local loop unbundling. And the, the Telcom, uh, Andrew, um, the Telcom guy, Andrew, said he'd like to debunk some myths. That's how he led into it. And he said that the first thing was that um, local loop unbundling will not increase rural penetration, penetration. rural oh. broadband penetration. And he said that the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee went so far as to call local loop unbundling pro-rich and anti-poor. And, uh, and Angus Hay responded to that and, uh, and said that, you know, it, it might, that is actually quite true, um, local loop unbundling do, will not directly affect rural penetration. What local loop and bundling has always been about is increasing competition in the space. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it's bringing in an argument that actually isn't about what the argument's about. It's yes. saying, it's um, sort of misdirecting quite horribly. Uh, yes, it, it could be that, but it could also be speaking to something, because I think that there's a, uh, this telecom guy did make a point in that there are a lot of people out there that still believe that local loop is a silver, local loop unbundling is a silver bullet that's going to cause a massive drop in prices. It's going to cause a massive uptake in, in, in broadband. Um, and, and really it, it might not, uh, it might decrease prices in the, in the long term. Um, Maybe even in the short term, we don't know uh, what the effect of local loop and bundling in South Africa is going to be. But what we can say for sure is it's going to let people compete with telecom. Yes. That there won't just be one provider providing ADSL access in South Africa. Um, and then the, the one other topic was also from a panel, and this was a nice throwdown between telecom's group CEO, uh, their new mm. group CEO, uh, Pinky Moholi, and um, uh, Dimension Data's Andile Ngaba who spoke about spectrum auctions. And Andile Ngaba argued against spectrum auctions. And, um, and Pinky Moholi said that spectrum auctions are the only way to keep political lobbying out of you know, the allocation of spectrum. And so you need to look at a model that balances those two things. Because if you remove the auction, you're going to have massive lobbying. If you don't want lobbying, then you need some, sort of, some form of auction. And so she suggested a hybrid model where you keep some spectrum aside um, for you know for for what what we're calling an open access wireless network that is sold on a wholesale basis to operators in South Africa, 
and you, then you keep another portion of the spectrum to um, to be able to auction off yes. for people who want to provision their own networks. Sorry, I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just caught up. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, no, no problem. And then there's one other article that's going to go up sometime later this week. Yeah, I was going to be facetious. They should just also give some more wide spectrum out to the back to the public, so we can have more Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, for public Wi-Fi spectrum. Don't think they're going to do it, but they should. Yes, yeah. I know WAPA is campaigning hard for that, and I and I hope they uh, I hope they get it. Um, the, I mean, uh, is it in the UK recently where yeah. where there was a big breakthrough for white spaces spectrum? Yeah, yeah. We should definitely get something like that in South Africa. It, it's uh, it's sort of that middle ground, um, or it's or rather not a middle ground, but another layer on top of an open access network. Well, my um, main argument and, with that is if you give not you don't give all of it, but if you get some of it. It also increases competition because if you if you don't get the whoever they're giving it to doing well um, or providing it at a reasonable cost, you know the public can build their own network like the PTA work, uh, yes. which can compete, and it becomes cost effective for somebody like PTA work or the guys to get to get to build a network. Unfortunately, you still can't connect to the internet, but you can compete. You know, provide something. So in a weird way, it should also help keep the prices down. Hmm. Um, I just wanted to double check, Johan, are you still there? You are frozen yeah. on my screen. Okay, cool. There you are. Great. As long as you're not frozen in the stream. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm listening. I'm listening. Look, um, out of this whole conference, was there any action items? Is there anything going to be done? Was this just a bunch of talk and nice holiday this, in East London? Yeah, exactly. And this is, this is something that you'll see me writing about. Um, Telcom obviously keeps their cards very close to their chest. Um, they, they uh, you know, hardly speak proactively about things. And, and even when we hear about stuff, they are very guarded about what information they reveal. So we won't hear about whatever Telcom's doing until somebody in the company tells us, um, I think. Um, but another article that I'll be writing, and which, in fact, I have written, uh, which should go up on my broadband soon, is that really it is now time for ICASA and the DOC to do something, uh, specifically with, uh, with regards to the spectrum auctions. Um, they've already talked about the local loop unbundling. I didn't even mention that in my article. Maybe I should go back and put that in. But um, there's all this talk. There are these ridiculous deadlines. And, and all that's been happening is a bunch of yapping and more tabling of options and more options and more options. And no decisions have been made, um, at least... And, and if they have, they have not been communicated to the public. Um, so it seems like just nothing has happened. And if they're going to meet their deadlines, they need to get off their asses. Okay. Was anything mentioned about DTT? Uh, no. No, there was no mention of DTT. Um, yeah. So uh, that, that's DOC domain. I don't think Telcom is too concerned uh, about that. And this, this uh, conference um, focused on telecommunications and not broadcasting. No, I mentioned it because, I mean, the whole DTT move is opening up a lot of bandwidth to Telco. Yes, absolutely. And it was and mentioned in not passing, about but there were no hardcore discussions about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, we're not going to get to cover that many other topics unless you guys want to cover anything specific. Another one thing I want to mention, Software Day in about two, three weeks, 17th cool. of September. They've finalize the day. I don't know if they've specified an actual location. There's a place you can go register though. Um, if you go to, sorry, let me just find the link here quickly. But the date is still the same. Yeah, the, apparently that's the international date, so that's really going to be sticking. Though, I think they left a bit late. Um, and last year they moved it right near, right before the end. Okay, so we'll just hang on and see, because that weekend I can't make. Yeah, I know. Also, we fairly busy, so we're gonna. I uh, might make an appearance. I don't know if we're gonna do a record. I'd like to do a recording, but it's so many things going on at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's a busy month. Right? Yeah, in terms it's of rage day. going on. Uh, oh, ready. when's right? End of this month. Oh, is it? Is it? Isn't it? That it starts on the thirtieth of, of September, hmm. and it runs to the second of October. 
at the Dome in Johannesburg. Yeah. So if anybody wants to go there and have a look at a bunch of kids playing games for the weekend. That should be good. <laughs> I know we went last year. Uh, we didn't watch the game thing, but they had the guys, they had the, the, the new PS2 move there, uh, which we tried out, and then a couple other games and some console stuff you could check out, which is very cool. Definitely worth it. Yeah, I'm sure. We'll be doing some recordings there. Touch word this year. I'm just, yeah. No, we'll do recordings. We have to be doing any, some things live. Yeah. But we'll see how that goes. Cool. I'm trying to think. Unfortunately, I don't have the calendar open at the moment with our rig that we've wired up here. Uh, so I think was there anything else I wanted to add? Uh, only the other thing that's interesting, uh, Drifter now has an Android app. Yes, finally. Except it's yeah. not a it's not a um, a universal Android app. Mm. It's just for Samsung devices. But not unfortunately, Han, for your ten point one. It's for the the old P one seven inch tab. They support they support the Galaxy S and the Galaxy S two at this point. Has anybody been able to actually see this thing will work? Um, some of the formats uh, the application. Reporting. I mean, yeah, yeah. Some of the I, I don't have a Samsung device, so I can't test it. Um, but some of the forumites have reported that they've got, got it to work, and they are reporting that um, they are struggling to get the thing working on rooted devices. It seems there's some sort of security check uh, in, the, in the app to prevent it from running on rooted devices. I'm speaking off the cuff here, so take this with a grain of salt. I still have to do a large amount of investigating to find out what exactly it is that they, they, they're doing. But if I were to wager a guess, it would be about piracy. Um, I know that that DSTV's uh, mm. content content guys, the guys that supply multi-choice and DSTV with content, are very skittish about having the content pirated off the channel uh, or off the platform, and so um, they have to provide some sort of guarantees. And obviously, if you have a rooted Android device, you can do with that thing what you want, um, and arguably you should be able to download or record the content coming off the Drifter, and uh, and maybe they want to guard against that. Yeah, but it's such a bad argument because the quality is not very good. The type yes. of guys that really want to do it can record it directly off the DSTV decoder, which is much better quality. Nothing stops yes. you recording it there. Or they're yes. going to pirate with pirate play. Yes. No, the, the thing is, I don't think there's anything yeah. we can do in South Africa to contribute to global piracy because we mm. get the stuff so late. Anyway, but look, I'm glad they've done it, uh, and I know it's, as far as I understand, it's DSTV whose hands are tied by the people spying on the context. It's not, you know, them not wanting to do it, just them not being allowed to do it. Uh, I've got started at Sierra Zeta Open. Um, yeah. yeah, the highlights for this, this week is zero. Mm -hmm. Next week, we've got Software Freedom Day set for the seven teams. Yep. And then the week after that, we've got I Week. That's what I've Runs from at, yes. And we're going to, should hopefully be, be broadcasting at least some of it. Uh, we're just going to work out the exact details of that. Yeah, cool. we are working on some ideas to actually be broadcasting from there. And then, yeah, yeah Rage Expo, end of the month. And then also, just note, the 1st of October is the South African Air Force um, yearly show at uh, Barter Turf Air Force Base. Oh, cool. And then, it's also Taste of Johannesburg coming up, which is going to be pretty cool. Same Correct. day as uh, uh, Software Freedom Day. And then next month it's Mob Woman Conference. We're looking yep. forward to it. That should be very cool. Yep, yep. And speaking of events, uh, I don't know when it is. I think it's the 24th of September, Friday. Friday. Yes, don't, forget, don't forget Friday. And um, I think we should paste into the show notes um, Which is the, gonna be our the Friday parody song. That is brilliant. Wait, wait. Which one? There's a couple. Do you see the official one? Yeah, the official one is funny, but there is a there is a bride day, um, sort of music video parody of the Rebecca Black song, and it is a it is a must. And it's playing now. Playing where? On, on the video. <laughs> no, we'll grab we'll we'll bring the show notes and then we can also watch it at some time. Yeah, yes. no, we'll put it. I'm just busy scanning through very quickly so the guys can get a bit yeah. of it. It is, oh. it is pretty damn good, and if you're plugged into the memes of the internet, you would definitely appreciate it. Looks good. 
All right. With that, uh, thanks, Johan. Thanks, Jan. You can find Jan bit. at My Broadband and at Jan VZ. Johan, you can find me on his blog. I saw there was a blog entry this week about your camping trip. Oh, sorry, your trip. Fishing trip. Fishing trip. And you can also find That's him right. on Twitter at Jan, Jan underscore else. That's correct. Cool. Right. Thanks, guys. And we can find you where, Tim? Uh, at Let's Talk Network TV and, and at Tim underscore Hawk. Are we still running the competition? We are. Uh, I have got another email from someone who shall be not be named because they are not illegible. <laughs> what was the entry? Uh, I have them saved, and when I can actually pull up my mail. When we're in studio, I'll go through all the mails I have. I've actually now been saving them into a tag in Gmail. Okay. So I am going to go through the ones that I haven't mentioned before and any subsequent ones. But if you want to find out about the competition, go to our wiki. It is on the main page of the wiki. So that's wiki.letstalknetwork.tv. And if you can't remember that, it's wiki.altinet.tv. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Great. Right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to this, uh, this quick Skype broadcast.